Okay, so I wanted to go over a little bit more uh, of the info, the data, regarding the uh, train derailment and the toxic chemical release that happened in East Palestine, Ohio, because there's a lot more stuff. So, yeah, they, there's this huge cloud of, of smoke, and I had to know, like, like what is being released, like why, why is this fire happening? So this is vinyl chloride, which is very toxic and highly dangerous and flammable chemical. Apparently has a boiling point of uh, 7.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So once it becomes exposed to air, it becomes very reactive and um, could get set on fire or even explode. And apparently they're worried about like a vapor explosion where it's like, Vinyl chloride is in the air and it gets ignited and just has one explosion at once. So I think that's why they did a what's called a controlled burn here. Because I had to wonder, like they said they set it on fire. You're looking at a toxic cocktail of harmful and potentially deadly chemicals purposely being burned off purposely by Purposely being burned off, why? yes. Let's rewind. Why? This all started with a train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. Mm -hmm. A town of nearly 5,000 people. Five of the cars nice. that derailed were carrying vinyl chloride, a dangerous chemical linked to multiple cancers. It's used to make a whole bunch of things from car parts to PVC piping. But on its own, vinyl chloride can cause blisters, headaches, dizziness, and can be deadly if breathed in for too long. It's also unstable and at least one of the train cars was at risk of exploding and sending deadly shrapnel flying as far as a mile and while that as far as a mile yeah so yeah uh, a huge explosion like that might uh would be would be worse maybe than releasing chemicals into into the atmosphere i mean this is a lot of look look at this cloud look, look at this thick cloud like this cannot be good but i guess it is would be better so, vinyl chloride decomposes when it's being burned into hydrogen chloride and phosphine. So, those two gases are very harmful, but maybe not as harmful as vinyl chloride, which is a carcinogen, which means it ca ha can potentially cause multiple kinds of cancers, right? massive explosion didn't end up happening, many are wondering if the way authorities are going about mitigating the incident is the best course of action. To avoid a catastrophic explosion, officials conducted a controlled release of vinyl chloride a few days after the derailment. They pierced controlled the train cars so the vinyl chloride could drain into a trench and burn. It resulted in this. Authority Wait, they pierced the cars so it could it could drain into a trench and burn? What if the if the If it wasn't pierced in the first place, then why why are they releasing more of it just so it can burn? Did they think like, oh, it could, it could explode? Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, what, they pierced it? Derailment. They pierced the train cars so the vinyl chloride could drain into a trench and burn. It was Maybe they felt like, oh, it's on fire. So like if the fire reaches the, the car that the chloride is in, then it could get set off and just cause a huge explosion. Mm, why don't just put out the fire? Why not just like... I don't know. This cannot be like releasing like thousands of gallons of th these toxic gases into the air. Cannot, there's got to be a better way. Resulted in this. Authorities said that the controlled burn would release hydrogen chloride and phosgene into the air. Yes, yes. as in World War One chemical weapon phosgene. So World what does War that I mean for chemical residents? Weapon. Well, everyone living within at least a two mile radius of the derailment site was ordered to evacuate. Ahead of the controlled burn, authorities released an evacuation map and essentially said, if you're in this area, leave or risk dying because of toxic fumes. Leave or risk dying. That's yikes. So yeah, there's a massive like evacuation event. Again, this is a town of 5,000 people. So, I mean, it, it's it's not as bad as it could be, but it's it's pretty bad. Like, all these people are at risk of like, not just like the short term effects, but like possibly uh, cancer causing uh, exposure to, to chemicals. Authorities have been monitoring the air and water quality since the controlled release started and said that none of the readings were concerning. But many evacuated residents still have questions, namely when they'll be able to return home safely. While the possibility for a massive explosion is no longer a danger, there's been no timeline given for when it will be safe for people to return to the affected area. Yeah, so there's no timeline for when it will be safe. Apparently a lot of people are just uh, starting to pack up and leave, trying to move to a new place. Right, because uh, 
they have no idea how long the chemicals are going to stay in the air, in the water, or in the soil. Apparently, um, is it hydrogen chloride that can stay in the soil for a long time? Yeah, here, because vinyl chloride is the big one that people are worried about, but, uh, not the only chemical, right? There are plenty of other chemicals. Let's see, we have vinyl chloride. Linked to primary liver cancer, brain and lung cancers, lymphoma, leukemia. Butyl acetates. I, I, butyl acrylates. Excuse me. I think this is the one that can stay in the soil for years, possibly. Right? Plus permanent lung damage. Ethanol. Or ethyl hexyl acrylates. The one that can... Be possibly carcinogen carcinogenic. Reactive chemical and an explosion hazard. The amount of product that is still in the car is marked as pending, so they don't know. Or maybe they do know and they don't wanna they don't wanna say. Isobutylene. Transported as a liquefied gas under its own vapor pressure. Used to help create rubber for tires and inner tubes. Inner tubes. <laughs> I remember playing with those as a kid. When inhaled in moderate concentrations, it can cause dizziness, drowsiness, and even unconsciousness. It irritates skin and eyes. Liquid form can cause cause frostbite. Is it because it's like Is it like uh, liquid nitrogen? It's very cold when it's in liquid form. Or it has to be cold to be in liquid form. No signs of breach. Benzene, not actively being carried on the train, but officials said there was residue of the substance for passion. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of chemicals. So, there are all sorts of health effects that could possibly result from this and that are already, like, resulting from this. Like, there are reports of not just human symptoms, but a lot of animals are experiencing strange symptoms. Not just, there's plenty of wildlife, right? But also, like, pet animals or farm animals that are experiencing strange symptoms that are behaving weirdly, right? Colorless liquid can harm eyes, skin, kidneys, blood. Inhalation, skin absorption, ingestion, or skin and eye contact. A solvent in paste strippers. Which, yeah, very toxic. So, I think vinyl chloride is the one people are talking about because it is a known human carcinogen. It can cause several different kinds of cancer, right? And of course, very, very flammable. They were worried that the burn would lead to phosphine and hydrogen chloride in the air, which it did, right? Thousands of gallons of it were in the air. One of which is a major industrial chemical that is a poisonous gas at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And it was used extensively during World War I as a choking agent. Phosphine was responsible for the large majority of deaths. Oh, so it can cause deaths. Yeah, apparently yeah, a lot of the, the chemical weapons that were used in World War I, they, uh, they made it impossible to breathe made it your lungs fill up with uh, liquid and just drowned you in your own in your own mucus or something Phos phosgy phosgene no detections of vinyl or hydrogen chloride found in ho screen homes in the area but yeah there's a lot of more work to be done and of course who knows if they're telling the truth what is vinyl chloride so yeah, it is. So it, it turns into a polyvinyl chloride, which is used in PC plastic piping, right? So rare liver cancer, yikes. So yeah, there are all sorts of like potential side effects, potential symptoms that uh, can be expected or unexpected. They nobody knows what's going to happen. Right. There are all sorts of different chemicals that can cause all sorts of different symptoms, so nobody really 
phosphine, probably toxic. This hasn't been getting a lot of coverage, and the coverage that it has been getting hasn't been very good. So let's talk about the trail derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. East Palestine's about an hour north of Pittsburgh, almost halfway to Cleveland. Norfolk Southern has a rail. No, not Pittsburgh. Right town, and this derailment happened right on the edge outside of town on the border of PA and Ohio. Of the cars that crashed, five of them contained vinyl chloride. It's a monomer used to make PVC. Some of the reporting on this has gotten vinyl chloride confused with polyvinyl chloride, the polymer made out of vinyl chloride. Now the reason I think that we got this all this already is vinyl chloride is very hazardous and very flammable. Polyvinyl chloride was in New Jersey where one tried vinyl chloride. That's per trial of vinyl chloride burning is. Of the many byproducts of the road, both the governor of Pennsylvania and Ohio are calling burning off the million pounds of this stuff. It's a success. success. But not mentioning that it means that we have hundreds of thousands of pounds of acid in the air, potentially. Now, ever since potentially, school, yes, I've studied a lot of industrial accidents. I just find it really fascinating. And organizations like the Chemical Safety Board, NTSB, and OSHA all have like really good reports available to the public. I think as a designer, it's really good to learn about mistakes. When looking at these kinds of industrial disasters across time, there are a couple things that are pretty universal across all of them. One, the responsible party in this case, Norfolk Southern Railway always yeah. plays down the reality of the situation. Always does. Politicians also just repeat the same lines, and then news outlets just repeat the same. So all we are hearing is the responsible party's word. Yeah, so there's who no, there's no way of knowing, really, uh, the true danger. Because, of course, they're going to play down the effect that government is going to play down the, the, the bad stuff because they want the public to not freak out. They want the public to... Um, to not be too critical of them and of course the companies want to play it down because they want to not have to spend as much money clean right Exposure to vinyl chloride can affect a person's liver kidney lung spleen nervous system and blood high rates of liver lung and several other types of cancer vinyl chloride burn occurred near the ohio river or flows directly into the mississippi river oh gosh thousands of farms may be affected by this because yeah of all all sorts of industries draw water from these rivers, right? Ooh, it's right on the border of Ohio and Pennsylvania, right? This is West Virginia. Is is this the Mississippi? I should know where the Mississippi River is. I think this is it. Uh, this is Mississippi, yeah. Oh, here we go. Ohio River Basin, it flows down here. Tennessee River. Basin. So yeah, it could flow all the way down to New Orleans, possibly. EPA sent a rail letter to the rail company saying that ethyl, ethylene, glycol, monobutyl ethyl, and all the other chemicals we went over were also in the rail cars. We basically nuked a town with chemicals so we could get a railroad open. Nuked a town. Or saying nuked with chemicals is kind of like playing it up a bit because um, nuke implies a whole different thing, right? Amanda Brashears has found chickens dead 10 miles from East Palestine. As soon as they started the burn, my chickens slowed down and they died. If it can do this to chickens in one night, imagine what it's going to do to us in 20 years. So yeah, releasing this, these like thousands of pounds of toxic chemicals into the air will have like untold effects. It's going to kill tons of wildlife. It's already killed fish in the rivers. It's probably going to kill birds if it's going to be in the air, right? Because this, they're, they Life may be list. just chickens, but they're family. Brashear says her chickens Yikes. were alive and well yesterday. She believes the smell following the detonation of the train carrying chemicals that derailed in East Palestine is to blame for her bird's sudden death. My video camera footage shows my chickens were perfectly fine before they started this burn. And as soon as they started the burn, my chicken slowed down. As soon as. If it can do this to chickens in one night, imagine what it's going to do to us in 20 years.
Officials have said that the smell wasn't toxic or dangerous, but... Oh, yeah, don't worry, it's not toxic. It smells weird and it's killing chickens, but uh, who knows? Of course they're going to say that, right? And yeah, they say that the, if, if it exploded, if it exploded, it could risk sending shrapnels uh, up to one mile away, which I would, honestly, I'd rather see the explosion than, uh, than this huge fire. Because an explosion is cool, right? This fire is cool in its own way, but like, not as cool. And they say like, it's, it's possible that this explosion could occur. I would have, I would have uh, done a Hail Mary and just like tried to like prevent the explosion from happening. Cause not only could you like prevent these thousands of gallons of, of toxic chemicals being released into the air, you could potentially like recover a lot of the vinyl chloride, right? I think there were already some vinyl chloride leaking, but they made, but they made it leak even more just so they could do a controlled burn of it. And dead fish in rivers. Oh, and they're doing a, they're setting up a little. Oh, there, there was, was hundreds. A well and groundwater are safe. However, after this couple saw that. dead fish in this creek that you're looking at, they're deciding to not take any chances. Oh, there was hundreds. Barrier. Russell Murphy is referring to the fish now belly up. No, in not the fishies. He and his wife noticed them fishy last fish. night, barely 48 hours fishy after fish. the fiery derailment, five miles away. This is huge, huge, huge environmental effects. That's now one of many concerns the EPA now faces. The impact of the fish, yes, there was a, a impact to those. However, the levels as we However, have seen it but... are protective to groundwater. We are aware there are some wells along that for residential wells. Environmental cleanup crews were at and actually in that water today. Yes. So are these booms, which are used to catch and stop anything that booms. shouldn't be flowing here or into Couldn't water do. wells, which Murphy uses for just about everything. And no, not the horses. Yeah, apparently there are, the there are reports of horses acting strangely. I don't know if they're dying yet. Horses are more resilient than fish. I believe, or like chickens. At least they're trying to fi uh, filter out some. At least they. I'm glad that they have something like this at least. But like, they can't possibly stop all of it, right? Dead fish and Leslie Run coming out of East Palestine. Run. This is their filter barrier that they have currently. Filter barrier. But I think it's important for people to see the dead fish. Um. I'm going to walk under the bridge uh, the here above the and show you. Coming right up, another fish. Oh, they're um, everywhere. Damn. There's hundreds of them up here. They're the larger species. The fish are pointing out. Hundreds of minnows. Another fish. Mini minnows. Another fish. They're just everywhere. Yeah, this is not going to kill fish. humans, probably, but fish. who knows what kind of health effects is it. Fish. I mean, these are minnows. I mean, they are in our streams. Taylor Holzer, a fox keeper, just outside the evacuation zone, says one of his foxes died. All have been acting sick since the vinyl chloride burn. Chemicals we were being told are safe, but definitely not safe for animals or people. It's also causing problems for their owners as well. Taylor Holzer and his... Yeah, again, like, dying is bad, of course, but, like, all sorts of other bad stuff can happen. They can be... Who knows, like, if this damage is even permanent or... ...family-run Parker Dairy. It's just outside East Palestine's original evacuation zone. Taylor is an ODNR-registered fox keeper. A couple of his foxes broke their legs trying to run after the initial derailment. One of his foxes even died. Like they broke their legs trying to run, so was the chemicals making them act up and like go crazy? Nowhere, he just started coughing really hard and just shut down and um, he had liquid diarrhea and just went very fast. Taylor tells Yikes. me all of his foxes have been sick and acting different since the weekend. Some have abnormally puffy faces, including the one he's no, holding. Not the he says they are not eating properly. Many are dealing with stomach issues and are acting lethargic. 
this isn't how a fox should act. He's n very weak, limp. He, his eyes are very like watery and weepy. His Some of the foxes are pacing rapidly in their pen. Another sign they are oh, not no. well. Taylor says the train derailment is to, causing all of these issues. They're trying to escape, well, probably. The train, uh, it's the only thing that could cause it because it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. The chemicals that we're being told are safe in the air, that's definitely not safe. For the animals. It's for animals or people. Taylor hopes justice is served for the animals and people of East Palestine. People's cats are getting sick and dying and people's other birds that they have in their house that they weren't being able to evacuate either. Just, it's not safe. Yeah. Now, like you heard at the beginning of this story, one of Taylor's foxes did die. He now has to get a necropsy on that fox to determine the cause of death for it. Now, every animal owner, whether it's a pet or a agricultural animal, farm animal, poultry, this has to be done. A necropsy has to be done to determine that cause of death. There are a few ways of going uh, about this. To set one up, pet owners, like for a dog or a cat, must contact their veterinarians, farm animal and poultry owners. They have to contact the Ohio Department of Agriculture and companion animal owners. They have to contact the Ohio State University. Yeah, so there are all sorts of, yeah, negative effects. Of course, they're, they're saying that it's safe, but it's obviously. I mean, the, possibly it's, it's because like nothing is to be done about this, right? There's nothing to be done. So it's like, it's like, oh, you're going to catch, uh, you're going to catch uh, these chemicals one way or another. So you might as well just not worry about it, right? You might as well just like, there's no point in telling them, but like, but you, you should be able to. You, you have to, you should know at least. First news. Vanguard, JP Morgan, and Blackrock top ten railroad owners of the Norfolk Southern Corp. Also, chemical burn made to be the largest environmental disaster in U.S. Yeah. So in my other video, I talked about like the causes for this and how like these people. These capitalist companies are, you know, cutting corners, cutting whatever corner they can just to increase profits, right? Just to, like, just to pursue short-term gains at the, the cost of long-term sustainability. Now, yeah, this, this guy is being, this, this, uh, reporter is being arrested. Apparently, like, he was, uh, derailed Friday, 20 of them carry Apparently he was trespassing, allegedly, but, you know, they, police will make up whatever reason to arrest you if they want to arrest you, right? In hazardous materials, as flames lit up the sky in northeastern Ohio. The evacuation order is in place for anyone within a mile radius of the crash site. These aren't, these aren't storm clouds. This is the fucking shit! The fucking shit fucking they brought off in East Palestine! This is Yikes. not fucking storm clouds! It is not. Look at it! Yikes. First, a national reporter, news reporter for reporting the truth. Yeah. Yeah, why are they arresting this guy? Dead fish floating. Former resident of East Palestine says it is so much worse than the media tells us. Water has been contaminated, the soil and the air is contaminated. Is that if you do this, you get your facts right. I literally Three new dangerous right chemicals are found on the train. Seed. Ethyl glycol. Uh, my old childhood best friend lives in the fucking town. Um, my current best friend literally lives right next to the town. It is so much worse than what the media is telling any of us. Uh huh. I'm. Three new dangerous chemicals. I'm surprised when they quickly told the people they could go back home. Yeah, there's, they're clearly acting, acting confident. They don't want to face the consequences. They don't want to like want try to spend this money, right? Medical management guidelines for vinyl chloride, health effects. Video shows sparks or flames 20 miles before the train derailment. Oh, this is what I was looking at before. Preliminary indications of mechanical issues in one of the rail car 
axles. ...miles before it derailed. The derailment, as we all now know, sent dangerous chemicals... Today... So yeah, the train was trying to break 20 miles before it broke down, so again, like... There are, clearly there are mechanical issues, the trains are not kept up to date, and, um... Like, this could have easily been avoided if, uh, if they did, like, the basic, just the bare minimum of trying to, trying to keep their tech up to date. Pretty stunning video, raising a lot of questions, especially for people in East Palestine, Ohio. As you can see, sparks uh -huh. and flames underneath this Norfolk Southern train, and this was 20 miles before it derailed. The derailment, as we all now know, sent dangerous chemicals into the air and forced thousands of people from their homes for days. Now the question is, when did the crew know that there was a problem? Hmm. That's this question. video obtained by our news partners at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette was taken by a security camera and the equipment manufacturer... You can see sparks flying from the wheels. Some 20 miles from East Palestine. And only, only a few cars are actually trying to break, right? You can only see the sparks on a few of the front cars. You can see what appear to be sparks. Or Wait, that isn't even a front car. Yeah, this is a. Uh... Yeah, what's going on here? Under hmm. one of the cars, as it passes the plant, the NTSB referenced the video at a news conference earlier this week. We uh, have attained two videos which show preliminary indications of mechanical issues on one of the rail car axles. That second video came from a processing plant a mile down the track, also in Salem. In front of that plant is a hot box detector, which scans the temperature of the axles as the train passes and sounds an alert if they're overheated. The and they alerted. An alarm from a wayside. There was an alarm. Detector shortly before the derailment, indicating a mechanical issue. Then an emergency brake application initiated. The NTSB says there was an alert, but it is not known if it came from the hot box detector in Salem or the next one down the track 20 miles away in East Palestine, where that derailment happened. Uh -huh. And if the alert wasn't triggered when the train passed Salem, why not? I spoke today with a retired Norfolk Southern engineer, Scott Wilcox, who lives in Avonmore. How would that person know there was an issue? Generally speaking, after the length of the train has passed over the detector, it will tell you there are no problems found. The NTSB has obtained the train's data recorder and audio recordings. Those are being analyzed at an NTSB lab in Washington, D.C. Now, the agency is also checking whether all the detectors were working properly. If the detector in Salem was working and there was no issue, Wilcox says generally it will send a message saying no problem found. The NTSB is expected to release its preliminary findings within 30 days. So yeah, t Norfolk Southern Corporation, total assets were $38 billion in 2020, operates the railway that caused toxic chemical release. Last Monday, the company made a $25,000 donation to assist a background resident. So, so they did make the donation, at least, uh, at least they did that, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, and currently they're committing to at least a million dollars more, which I think is because of the increased media coverage, right? They're finally like, they're like, okay, fine, we did an oopsie, so I guess we gotta give some money, right? So nitric acid, oh right, apparently, yeah. What is our truck carrying nitric acid, a hazardous material overturned on I-10? Hazmat situation. Yeah, are they trying to kill us? What is with all these chemicals in the air? In Tucson, Arizona. Oh man, there's just like chemicals just fucking everywhere in the air in America now. At least like, I'm in an area where it's like... Not as bad, but again, like uh... I'm kind of close to Ohio, I guess. Anyway, in conclusion, yeah, if you're in America, um, you know, consider consider moving to another country, uh, or just uh, just be careful. Maybe maybe invest in a gas mask if you can afford it, right? So, because who knows? Apparently, there was another train derailment in Texas, but that wasn't carrying as many chemicals, right? 
I'm trying to be alarmist. I don't think this is conspiracy. Why have three environmental tragedies happened in the span of seven days? What's going on? Truck carrying nitrate acid spills is not an environmental tragedy. I mean, it is pretty bad though, right? Oh, just a typical hazmat cleanup. <laughs> and a very local one at that. Trucks crash all the time. Yeah, trucks crash all the time. What are you worried about? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to gaslight me into thinking, like, not a bad thing, right? Or that's that this is normal. No, this is not normal. Okay. Yeah. In conclusion, this is the result of, like, politicians and businessmen trying to pinch pennies uh cut corners supposedly like the best uh country in, a, in the world but we can't afford this so yeah the lesson here is to not cut corners and to put safety safety first right well thanks and goodbye